Hi, everybody. I'm Melinda Gallant, and I want to welcome you to another home edition of Cape Conversations. Yes, it's the fuzzy slipper edition once again. And today I'm talking to nutritionist Dina Irwin. Oh my gosh, she is so nice. You're going to like her a lot. So come along. Let's have another Cape Conversation. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Oh, my gosh, we've got a great guest. Uh, she, I probably should just hire her to work with me because I am so not doing anything I'm supposed to do at my age and demeanor and stature. However, you all and I am going to learn a lot. Her name is Dina Irwin, and she is with the Community Health Center of Cape Cod. Welcome, Dina, to Cape Conversations. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, Tell me all about yourself, Dina. What do you do? So I'm a nutritionist. I've been a nutritionist for 30 years, a wicked long time. Um, I've been, enjoyed every minute of it. I've been at the Community Health Center for over three years, and it's it's a great place to work, and um, I, I love it there. And I'm they give me the opportunity to um, and to practice holistically. Um, so in addition to nutrition, I also get a chance to teach yoga there. I'm, I'm a yoga teacher as well as a nutritionist. Um, so it's a fantastic place and we really care about the health and well-being of all parts of the patient. <laughs> including the head, right? The mind? <laughs> it, it, yeah, including everything. Um, and, and, um, it, and one of the things that um, came to my mind as you were doing your introduction is I'm going to encourage you to be kind to yourself, um, <laughs> which is something that that I that I teach a lot in nutrition and in yoga. We we are also hard on ourselves, and one of the main um, I incorporate a lot of yoga philosophy into what I do with nutrition, and ahisma is one of the philosophies, meaning treating other people with kindness, treating mm -hmm. ourselves with kindness. That includes ourselves, and we all are so hard on ourselves and um just you know to to be kind to one another to be kind to ourselves don't beat ourselves up give ourselves credit for what everything we're accomplishing and don't beat ourselves up over what hasn't come yet it's life is a practice not a prayer <laughs> well as i always like to say I, I don't know anybody that's perfect and the only perfect one who was supposed to be perfect they crucified him so there you go <laughs> i mean let's face it uh none of us right <laughs> um right you know that's a that's a, i'd like to kind of talk a little bit more about being kind to yourself and don't beat yourself up i think um yeah. i think all people do it both men and women beat mm -hmm. themselves up i think women I in agree. particular mm -hmm. um as we say to our friend who we might have forgotten to their birthday card and it was like i'm so sorry or you walk in front of somebody going into uh, and you didn't mean to and you go i'm so sorry or you're in a meeting with you know a meeting of management people and for some reason you're the one who has to say i'm so sorry you would never find other people doing that especially men exactly so so exactly. How, how how do you advise or work with folks to stop doing that um, it, it's a constant practice mm -hmm. and our thoughts are so very powerful. Um, so sometimes it's just working with, with maybe a personal mantra um, of, you know, it, it could be something like I am worthy or I am kind to myself. Right. Um, and, you know, sometimes we'll have, we'll, people will put it on sticky notes and put it all over the <laughs> place where they can see it so that it's a constant reminder. Um, when I'm teaching my yoga class, I always start with a positive affirmation of um, something that's occurring in the present tense. Like, you know, like we said, I am kind to myself. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that could change from moment to moment what your affirmation is. Um, but it is, it's a constant reminder. So, so you talk about yoga and how you incorporate it into what you do. Uh, I know yes. uh, my daughter actually is doing, um, uh, she's a college professor, 
but she is doing, uh, she wants to become a yoga instructor. So she's doing some something. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. <laughs> um, and it's all, it's an online course, obviously, because of the pandemic. Uh, but she's done right. yoga now for probably 10, 15 years. I, I would imagine it's been that long. Mm -hmm. um, um, but I know there are different, and I've taken a few, few, this many yoga classes, because uh, I have no flexibility in my personality or my body, I guess. So anyway, so um, kind to yourself. I know. But, <laughs> so anyway, um, they're all different kinds of yoga. So what what is your what is, what do you practice primarily? Uh, so, so you're, you're correct. There are all different kinds of yoga. Listen to what your body is telling you. It's, it's, I like to say yoga is all about you. It, don't practice anything that causes you pain or discomfort. Um, what I teach at the health center and now on Zoom um, is chair yoga. So it's yoga done seated in a chair, which makes it very accessible to, um, to a lot of people. If you can sit and breathe, uh, <laughs> And, and and smile then you can do yoga um, so so I love the fact that um, that's why I love teaching chair yoga that's my that's my favorite class to teach and um, because it does make it accessible to everybody um, well, and geriatric yoga is it considered geriatric yoga it's it's not um, it's it's for all ages mm -hmm. um, and people of all different um, physical abilities. Um, I do, I get some, I get a wide range of people of all different ages and, um, and I always give options in my class too, so that, um, you know, you have different levels of things, you know, it might not be comfortable for someone to totally lift their arm up over their head. So we might give them the option of, you know, bringing it to where it feels comfortable in their bodies. Again, yoga is all about you. Um, and it, and there's nothing wrong. Like we said, there's there's really nothing wrong with just sitting there and breathing, um, and and that's what I incorporate a lot of different breath work into my classes as well. Um, so, so we do a lot of different breathing techniques, and and yoga gives you the ability to bring yourself into rest and digest from fight or flight. And we've all been in fight or flight the, the last few months. It's yeah. it's yeah it's constant so it's it's just a nice way to to be able to pull yourself into that rest and digest system and find some moments of calmness um and, and get out of that system and um and then like i said i incorporate a lot of yoga philosophy into what i do in my nutrition practice i i get to um combine the wisdom of yoga with the science of nutrition um and you know we'll talk about how eating while you're in rest and digest versus eating when you when you're in fight or flight has a has a totally different impact on your digestion and metabolism and um, so sometimes i'm working with folks just on how you eat versus what you eat because mm -hmm. um, digestion begins in your brain before you've even had a bite of food to eat and um wait what go back right yeah so you okay so explain that to me yeah, so it's the, the cephalic phase of digestion. It starts in your brain before you've had anything to eat. And if you're nice and calm in, in that um, the parasympathetic, the rest and digest system, it gives your brain a chance to tell your gut that food is coming and the digestive enzymes start to flow and the blood is pulled to the gut where it's needed. Um, and it can have a profound impact on how we're, we're metabolizing our food. Um, so, so it's, and, and sometimes I'll work with people on mindful eating um, okay. because some, I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes, you know, we're not paying attention to our hunger and fullness signals or how much we, we ate and food is enjoyable. It should be pleasurable. And you, so when you're eating, you want to enjoy it and, and not like look down at the bag of something while you're watching TV and say, Oh, where did it go? Like, it's, <laughs> it's, you want to enjoy it. Um, and it's, and finding balance, just like we find balance in, in yoga, kind of finding balance in life and what we're eating. And, you know, it doesn't make you a bad person if you eat a brownie. Um, and, and, but we do, we beat ourselves up over it. It's like, oh my, 
while we're eating it. Like, oh, I shouldn't be eating this, and it's so bad for me. And it's like, how enjoyable is that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, um, it, it, you know, bringing that mindfulness in and, and truly enjoying every bite without judgment. So it's another yoga philosophy, it's judgment free. There's no, you know, there's no good or bad or right or wrong. It's, it just is. I, um, I, for 30 years, I sat at a desk probably most of the time and ate my lunch five days a week, sometimes six days a week. Um, I was a shopping center manager. Mm. So dealing with merchants and the public and, you know, security and maintenance and all. And yeah. I learned to eat fast. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think that's the hardest thing for me now. I also... Yeah would eat fat i learned to eat fast and then i'd come home and have dinner with the family and by the time i sat down they were done so if i didn't oh, no. eat fast and, sit and eat fast they'd all be gone and i'd be right. there alone so right. um you know it's i mean i think that's typical for most women i think you know you you're doing all these different things and you're juggling things and, and what have you multitaskers that we have to be um so how do you learn not to eat fast? It's a, it's a constant practice. <laughs> so, okay. And it does take 12 weeks to develop a new habit. So it is a constant practice for 12 weeks mm -hmm. um, before it becomes a habit. And it's, um, it, and it's just a constant reminder. Um, sometimes it's helpful to eliminate the distractions that are, that are around when we're eating. You know, if the TV is on, if, um, uh, you know, if if there's a lot of different distractions of the computer or reading while you're eating, then sometimes that'll cause you to eat really fast. Um, so, you know, the weather's beautiful now. Maybe go outside and enjoy a little picnic meal or, 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 or sit on, you know, the patio and, and enjoy a meal in nature. Sometimes that can help you to slow down. Um, and eating and, and thinking of that mindfulness and truly enjoying every bite with all of your senses mm -hmm. um, will help. And it, sometimes it is, it is hard to develop these new habits. So sometimes I'll encourage people just to focus on the first bite. Mm -hmm. Eat that first bite mindfully. Don't worry about the rest of them. Just, <laughs> you know, to one step at a time, you change, yeah. it, it, it doesn't happen overnight. So just focus on the first bite. Mm -hmm. And again, be kind to yourself and know also that change occurs in spirals and not straight lines. So sometimes it's taking two steps forward and one step back. Nice. And if you forgot to eat slow one day, one meal, it's okay. If, <laughs> There's it's another not, coming up. <laughs> yeah, just the next try again, the next meal. Um, but it is it it is challenging. Um, so I know I read a little bit about your bio, and I know that you uh, also work with people with diabetes, correct? Yes. Yes. Yep. Um, and, and what do you do for the health center for that? I'm sure you're working with clients right now online for that as well. Because these are stressful times. Yeah, so that's stuff. Yeah, the last couple of months I've been working from home doing telehealth visits. So um, I have not met a single patient face to face in, in months, um, which is, it's, it's been challenging and it's also been enlightening. So that's it's a little bit of both but yes i see a lot of patients with different chronic health conditions including diabetes um and it's kind of the same things that we've always been working on um and some people have found that they've had extra time so that they've had more time to work on their health goals um and that they have more time to go out for walks and try new recipes and other folks have um, have just been struggling with stress eating and you know working at home more and, and having food more accessible and it's, every person is so different and unique um, and what I do is um, is also very personal and unique so there's no cookie cutter approach um, I I talk to someone and find out what their needs are. Um, and then we come up with an individualized plan. I, I tend not to hand someone a diet to follow. Diets don't work. Um, but you, you know, you, you, you can follow a very nice diet and lose weight and then gain it all back again. So we're working on, you know, sustainable lasting changes. Um, again, finding balance that there's, you know, I'm never going to tell someone you have to eat that or you can't eat that. Um, so it, it, it's all just working with the person's unique needs. Um, 
And then I, and I have been, I was teaching a chair yoga class every week at the health center, mm -hmm. which I started about a year ago and it got very popular. Um, so now with working at home, I was able to continue that on Zoom. Um, oh, you're kidding. Wait, well, how would I find that if I wanted to take your class? Would I, do you have a website or do I go through the community health center? Um, so it's, we have a Zoom meeting ID number. It is a community class. So it is free and open to, to anyone. It's every Friday at 11 o'clock and, um, and you can join from the comfort of your own home. Well, how would I find that Zoom ID number? Oh, I can give it to you. Um, and it's also, you what? I said that would help. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, let me, let me, you think I would remember it. That's okay. okay. It it's is very forgiving too... audience. <laughs> right? So I should be kind to myself. All right. It is 268 755 316. Okay. That's great. And does and, it have a name, a title? Um, it's it's just called um, Nourishing Chair Yoga. And so the interesting thing about you know doing things from Zoom um, is that it, we were able to open it up to so many more people because before it was just open to the folks at the community health center. Right. So I came up with a collaboration um, with my aunt. Um, she's like my sister. She's <laughs> she's only we're about the same age, and um, she I owns a yoga studio. You what? You I have, have one too? I have a niece who's almost my age, so I guess. Exactly, so you, you've got the sister thing. Um, so she owns um, Heart and Soul Yoga Therapy in Western Massachusetts. So um, this was a great way for us to collaborate. Um, so not only were we opening it up to more folks, but I get to um, stay in touch with my aunt because we get to see each other every Friday oh, in nice. the chair yoga. Yeah. So it's a, because it's very isolating to work from home. Um, and, and she she lives way out in Western Mass anyways. Um, and she also has a um, satellite studio on Cape as well. Oh, she does? Uh, but, uh, so there was, uh, yeah, in, in Chatham. Um, so it was a nice way for, for me to connect personally. And like my mom's able to come to my class every week on oh, Zoom. Nice. Um, so it, it's been kind of nice. That Excellent. way just to connect. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I did look up uh, your aunt's name is Bonnie, correct? Yeah, Bonnie Lynn Sandler. Right. And um, her studio does a lot with all kinds of, not all kinds of, not only all kinds of yoga, but also pain management and uh, all kinds of, of interesting things. And it's said that they are doing some of those things now, certainly on Zoom. So, if anybody's interested, they should take a look at her website. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Heart and soul yoga dot net. Um, but yeah, she's she's a yoga therapist, which requires a lot more training than what I have as a yoga teacher. Um, so she's able to offer a lot a lot of other things. Um, but she was happy to um, also offer a lot of programs for the community and not charge like for the chair yoga class. So nice so that's been really good that's excellent so you don't yeah. know when you'll be back at the community health center but you are still seeing patients or clients correct well. correct and yes i am so if i wanted to um get in touch with you would i go through the community health center and say hey look i'm looking for a nutritionist i need to talk to somebody now they would get you in touch with those folks or how does that work Yes. So, um, so I work at the community health center full time and I, right now I'm only seeing community health center patients. Okay. Um, so if you are a patient of the community health center, ah. um, your doctor can um, give you a referral. Um, so they're very happy for people to, to talk to me and, um, you could call, um, you could certainly go on the website and uh, the community health center website and, um, look at the information about nutrition services but if anyone just wants to talk to me and have questions about what it would um 
entail, you could always just leave me a message at extension 1184. Um, I am working from home, so you would leave me a message and then I call folks back. Right. Uh, right. So that, that's a little tricky as well. Um, but yeah, I'm happy to talk to anyone. We have, I think we have five locations now and something like 20,000 patients. It's, it's um, huge. Yeah, and I'm the only nutritionist, so that's why it's right. It's only open to community health center patients. I see. Um, it's the nutrition piece of it, but it, but anyone can participate in my Zoom chair yoga class. Okay. So my other question to you is: Are nutrition services covered by insurance? I mean, I'm a woman of a that certain is a age, so I'm on uh, Medicare. Um, and I yes. of course have a supplement as well as we all have to have because of this how we do things here. Um, but it is most most of the time nutrition is covered under um, your insurance. Most of the time it is yes, um, and and the insurances are also now covering the telehealth visits, which are nice. Wow. Um, yeah. So yes. So um, for for most. Um, most people are covered by insurance. All insurance covers some kind of nutrition services. Everybody's policy is a little bit different. So I always encourage people to check with your individual policy just to make okay. sure. Okay. Uh, but, but yes, it's because it's, it's um, it, we're trying to prevent problems. We're trying to promote wellness. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and, you know, prevent and manage a lot of these chronic health conditions. Uh, is, which can be done with food. Food is medicine. Um, well, if you think and, about it, and, it is, um, isn't it? So are herbs. Herbs are medicine. It is. You know. It's exactly. Plants are our friends. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, food is medicine. And um, we were doing, I, I was able to do a lot of community outreach programs in the past as well, with doing some cooking classes and things like that. So hopefully, um, in the future, we'll be able to bring those back, or maybe have those on Zoom as well. I I don't know, um, but just to give people, you know, I like to take um, that that science of nutrition and mm -hmm. and bring it into practical life experiences. So, yeah, someone can say, "Eat this; it's really good for you. It has all these vitamins and stuff in it." But then, you know, you go to the store and you buy the broccoli or whatever it is, and you bring it home, and it's, okay, well, now what do I do with it? Um, so just you know, trying to give people, um, you know, some practical, uh, fun ways of enjoying these healthy mm -hmm. plants mm -hmm. or, or food or whatever it is. Well, um, it's, it sounds wonderful, actually. It sounds terrific. So if you were going to leave us with a couple of pieces of advice, what would it be today on this sunshiny day on Cape Cod? Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Oh, right. Go outside. <laughs> Go outside, get some fresh air and sunshine. <laughs> Maybe, you know, practice a little bit of yoga outside, take a walk. Um, no, seriously, I think that the, um, the fresh air and the sunlight is, is essential to our health. Um, it, and, you know, like, um, like we talked about earlier, be kind to yourself. Mm -hmm. Give yourself credit for all the positive things that you may be doing. Um, mm -hmm. If you go out and take a walk today, give yourself credit for that. Mm -hmm. um, you deserve it. Um, maybe, do, you know, don't take things so seriously. Have fun with exploring and enjoying new things, um, trying new recipes. Um, you know, we, we had talked about eating slow, so maybe whatever you're going to eat for for your next meal eat that first bite really mindfully mm -hmm. um i know you asked me for one thing and i keep going on no and on no and no on. that's this is wonderful we should make a list good, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great idea <laughs> Um, but even in the, in the in the chair yoga classes that I teach, I keep it lighthearted. We should we should smile. We should have fun. Um, and you know what? Even if you're having a really bad day, and who hasn't had a bad day recently? Mm -hmm. You, if you turn the corners of your mouth in an upright fashion um, and leave it there for a minute, you're tricking your brain into being happy. Um, so bring a smile to your face and it will, it will boost your mood. It's, it's funny because I have done that almost all my life. 
I've, I've, if I have something is bad, you know, I've had a bad day, from an early age, I would force myself to smile. Now, sometimes it can be covering up things, which isn't so good. But, however, <laughs> it is good because it does trick your brain. All of a sudden you go, oh, okay. You know, it's all, it's all good. We can get through this, you know? And I think exactly. a lot of people walk around glum like this all the time. It's tough. How, how do you ever get out of that feeling? I, I don't know how you get out right? of it. Yeah, I don't know either. So, uh, you know, so, so smile and um, it's it just, if just find some, some small moments of enjoyment wherever you can. And if you can't, then fake it till you make it. So. <laughs> I like it. It's perfect. <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, Dina, you know, I want to thank you for being with me today. It was wonderful. There was a lot of knowledge here. Um, we'll make sure that, that the website and, and uh, the health center um, Zoom number gets up on um, uh, underneath your name on this. Um, on my, I'm so fortunate to have a wonderful sandwich community television audience, and they're really kind of all over the Cape and off Cape. So um, hopefully uh, there'll be a lot of people tuning in and oh, nice. seeing it. Um, and if I can, I certainly will, because I could use a little bit of stretching here and there, let me tell you. <laughs> right, so, so who can't take an hour to have fun and move and breathe and laugh? And, That's true. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but thank you so much for having me. It's excellent. Thanks again. Have a great day. You too. Wow, Dina Irwin talking about nutrition, chair yoga, the things you need to do to be kind to yourself. We all need to be kind to ourselves, especially these days. It's a pandemic life we're leading, I think, and to be kind to yourself is so important. So thank you for joining me today, and I hope you take care of yourself, wear your mask to protect you and to protect me, and I'll see you next time on another Cape Conversations.